In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to take some old books that I got from the thrift store and turn them into beautiful French looking books. Then we'll take this old box that I got from the thrift store for $10.95 and we'll turn it into an awesome farmhouse storage box on wheels. And lastly, we'll take a package of beads that I got from Myers and turn it into this really cool farmhouse beaded garland. So if you're ready for this week's projects, then let's go ahead and dive into them. Just one quick note before we get started though. If you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and if you ring the bell, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. So I bought these books at the thrift store. And what we're gonna do with these today, we're gonna make them into old French looking books. And um, we're gonna take the covers off. I tried to find books that were similar in size. So as you can see, they're all pretty close in size. That's what you want. And we're gonna do a little technique on them to make them look old and French. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of this um, blue slate paint. Um, it's just a craft paint. Any light blue paint is gonna work. We're gonna start by painting these books before we do that technique to make them old and French. Okay, so let's get started. this one here. You just want to paint over the lettering and the entire cover. So we're going to let this dry and have this all that blue slate color. I'm gonna move on to this book here. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Just wanna paint over. This does not have to be perfect because when we do the next step, it's not going to look perfect. We don't want it to look perfect. We want these to look old, like they've been around. They're, the backings are starting to break down, deteriorating. Again, we're going to paint the, the pages. this one off to the side and we'll finish with this book here now this book has like some kind of library piece of paper and just take that off we're gonna put that to the side because we're gonna be able to use that for something. Okay, so we're just gonna let those dry. We'll let those books dry and um, we'll come back and do our little technique to them. Okay, so our books are completely dry. I'm gonna take part of this little cover here and make a little square. All right, now the reason we did that is because we're gonna put some paper clay on this we are gonna make it look like it's being chipped up, it's old, it's, de it's just deteriorating. And we're gonna use a little bit of these to kinda 
the, these little pieces of paper just to kind of make the imprint of like maybe how the um, book would have, just like what we took off, uh, a library kind of thing. So we're gonna use some paper clay on this. I've been using paper clay for years. I love paper clay. We're gonna just kind of smear that through the back and that's gonna make it look very old. So let's start with one of these. start with this one here. I'm just gonna take some of this paper clay and smush it down. You use a little water too. Water helps smooth it a little and make it a little more like putty. I'm gonna take the scraper and I'm gonna scrape across. Now don't make it all smooth. You want it looking like something like this. I'm gonna press this piece of paper in that we cut. out the pieces that lift it up. So I just want to show you this. I want to show you what it looks like. So this is kind of what you want. Don't make it smooth. You want it a little, you see how that's a little bit rougher? That's kind of what you want. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna work on the other three books to make them look exactly like this. So we're gonna take some paper clay and do the same thing. water here. Smush that down onto our book. I'm going to take the scraper and go over it. You just got to play around with it to get the best results. You know, just kind of smear it on, but don't make it look uniform. You just wanna kind of do it randomly. You don't want it smooth. Again, this book is supposed to be like deteriorating. It's a French book that's been sitting there forever, 
for years and years. So you kind of want it to look like this. All right, let's finish our last book and let that dry overnight. And I think that one looks pretty good too. Okay, so we're gonna stop right now. We're gonna let these dry overnight and then we'll finish painting them. Okay, so our French books have dried overnight. They're all hard, which is great. Now we're just gonna finish them off. All right, so we are gonna use a little of this Thunder Blue by Folk Art. Just gonna dip my brush into it. Very blue, as you can see. I'm gonna get a little off on the plate. And we're gonna dab in certain areas a little of this really dark blue. See how we're just kind of like dry brushing it on? a little more on here to this one. We're gonna add a little to the cover here. Okay, so we have a lot of that dark blue on there. We are gonna let that dry and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a little bit more to it and they're gonna look awesome. Okay, so our books are dry here. We just added that dark blue. Now we're gonna go over it again with the light blue that we had. So I'm just gonna add that to our plate. Gonna dip our brush in. Start with one simple book here. And we're just gonna dry brush that a little over. See, we want some of the dark showing through, but we don't want it to look speckled or anything like that. We are gonna leave some of this white Now, if you look closely, you can see some of the dark, but it's not so prominent on here. We want some of the darkness to shine through, like what we did, but not like street, not all spotty. So we're gonna go over that so that you can see some of it underneath there. Like this was really dark blue at one time. 
but we don't want it completely like splotchy, um, you know, the real dark blue. We just want a hint of it like, wow, this was, used to be like a real dark blue book and now it's just disintegrated. And although you can see some of the blue, it's just very faded now. Just very faded. So again, like this is just way too dark. We want it to appear like it was a really dark blue book at one time, but now it's just faded and the color's kinda just really muted now and the book's kind of disintegrating again this is just too stark blue see that just gives it like dimension that blue but we don't want it speckled we want it just hints of blue. Like the pages are just like peeling in the back here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. See, we added that blue in, but again, just it's too, like, like we actually dabbed it with blue paint. We don't want that. See, too streaky. We don't want that. All right, so I think this is looking really good. We're gonna let that kind of, we're gonna let that dry and we'll see how it looks. I think it looks pretty darn good though. Okay, our French books are beautiful. Completely just beautiful. Anyway, we're gonna tie them together with some jute and I created some French hang tags. We're gonna add that onto our books. I'm just going to tie these around. And I'm going to loop that hang tag through there. that long so and that looks like a finished set of books So I found this box at the thrift store for $10.99. I really like it. I like the hardware on it. And I think we can do something really cool with this box. So let's get to work. First thing we need to do is clean it up. So I'm just gonna get this price tag off there. And I have some Clorox wipes. I'm just gonna wipe it down. First things first, we are gonna use we're gonna use some of the, my bare paint. I always use this paint. It's bare paint, it's paint and primer in one, 
and it's a Sherwin-Williams color called Pure White. I had it color matched. So we're gonna start by painting this whole thing white. I'm gonna even paint over the hardware because, yeah, I'm gonna actually open it up first. I'm gonna paint over the hardware because I want the hardware to be white too. So we're gonna let that dry, and I'm gonna come back and probably do a second coat, but after this is dry, I'm gonna definitely flip it over and do the bottom. Our box is completely dry, so we're gonna take some sandpaper, and we're just gonna sand it and distress it a little. You wanna make sure to you know, open up your lid to make sure it's not stuck, because you wanna do that right away before you, know, you wait like five days and then you can't get it open. I'm not gonna paint the inside, because the inside's beautiful and um, we're just gonna leave it natural wood, but we did paint this and we're gonna distress that. So you wanna go and distress that over areas, like the hardware, like, you know, like it's been chipped up. side. We're going to do a light sanding on top. Getting that nice chippy kind of look. That's what we are going for. So you just want to sand it all the way around. I have this five here. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to spray it black. I took this outside and I sprayed it. I forgot to tape me spraying the five, but I'm sure you know how to spray paint. So I'm just showing you that I did this and we're gonna put it on our box once it's dry. Our box is completely painted and distressed. As you remember, I painted the number five that's drying right now, but I wanna have it say number five. So I want N, O, and then we're gonna do the five right here. Now to do that, we're gonna use the IOD stamps here. We're gonna use these IOD stamps. I'm gonna pull out the big N We're gonna use this in here. So we use that. And then I wanna use the little O. I don't want the big one, I want the little O. So we use this one as well. And it has this little piece of plastic here. Yes, I did cut the, um, the line plastic that the IOD stamps are supposed to go on. It's really not that much money and I rather work with a smaller surface. So let's um, put these on. I'm gonna put the N here. Okay. I'm gonna stick the little O right here. Let's see. Get a little over. I like that. I think that looks good. 
So we're gonna take a little bit of black paint and we're gonna dip this in there and then we're gonna stamp number right here. And then we'll add our five onto here. I have some folk art black matte paint. We're just gonna squeeze a little on this tin foil here. And then I'm sort of gonna just kind of paint that on there. I have like this little sponge and we're just kind of painting that on there. Now before you use the stamps, you always want to condition them by just running a little sandpaper over them. Okay, that should be good. And now we are gonna dip this into the paint. Okay, so it's inked up pretty good. I'm gonna turn this on its side. And I'm just gonna place that right on top here. You don't wanna move your stamp at all. And just kind of ring your finger or you know roll your finger over the top of the stamp. Do not move it, but just ring it over. Just gonna press down a little bit. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see. Looks pretty darn good. So we have number here. So that looks really good. I'm happy with that. It looks like our five is pretty much dry and it has little stickies on it. So we're gonna take the stickies off and we're gonna put it onto here. So I'm just gonna line it up to where I want it. I want it to about right there. And we're just gonna press and it'll stay. Does that look cool or what? I love it. Okay. Now it looks a little plain in here, so I wanna do a little bit more to this box. All right, I decided that I'm gonna use this keyhole. Um, this is uh, an IOD mold. Um, a finished piece. Um, I actually have them in my Etsy shop. It was when I did the books. And it's a keyhole and key set. So if you don't have the mold and you want to do something like this, I do sell the finished pieces in my Etsy shop. Anyway, I just think that this is going to look really nice there. It's not over the top. And it's just gonna add, cause it's just too much blank space in the middle. We don't really wanna put a transfer on there cause we already have our number five on there. So I think this right here will just make it look really nice. So I'm gonna get the glue and we're gonna put it on here. So the best glue to use is Type-On when you're doing like any furniture applique. It stays on awesome. Any woodworking you have, I definitely would use, again, type on. So that's what we're going to use on the back here. I'm just going to add a little glue to the back of our app, um, our furniture applique. And then you want to put it right in the middle. So let's see, let's measure this out at about 10 and three quarters is where we need it. So we need it about right here. That is the middle. So I'm gonna place that right here in the middle. And we'll just kind of place it about right there. Make sure it's centered and straight. I think that looks good right there. So we'll let that dry. And I wanna do one more thing to this chest or this box. I think that looks good right there. So again, we'll let that dry and then I, I wanna do one more thing to this. 
So I'm at Lowe's right now, and I'm looking at caster wheels. These are the smallest ones they have, one and a quarter inch, and it comes two in a package. We're going to pick up two packages. So I went to Lowe's, and I got these caster wheels. They're just, um, I think, one, yeah, one and a quarter inch caster wheels. I'm not a big fan of the gold on this, so I'm probably going to paint that. But these were probably the least expensive ones. Now I suggest to you, when you go to flea markets, look through their little hardware stuff. If you find stuff like this, pick it up because you never know when you're gonna need it for a project. So I bought, they come in sets of two, so I have four. And again, I, I'm not really crazy about the gold, so I think I'm just gonna put a little paint on that. And then we're gonna put it on our box because I want our box to be able to move. And I love this. So I'm using um, DIY paint. This is a little black dress. Chalk paint works really well on metal. So I thought I'd use a little of this on there. We're just gonna get rid of some of this gold here. So that is looking a little more what I want. Just black, just so it'll complement the box. So I'm just gonna do these real quick. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're just gonna let that dry. And if we see any spots after it dries, we can always go it back in with the little black dress paint here and touch it up. All right. It is time for us to put on the wheels. The wheels are all dry with the chalk paint. I'm gonna flip this over. And then we're gonna line up, we're gonna line up our um, wheels here. Put one right there. And then we'll put one right here. You want to make sure that you don't use too long of screws so it goes through and you know it's sticking up. I have these very little screws that will fit right in here and we're not going to have a problem with them sticking up you know inside the box. So I'm just going to take them and start drilling them in. Okay, so we have these wheels on. Now we're gonna put on the other side. They are all in now and we'll flip it over. It moves, it's so cool. I love it. Oh, this came out so good. I love the little wheels on it. Love this box, so nice. I've always wanted to make one of those farmhouse wooden garlands, and I think we're gonna do that today. So let's do that. We're gonna use Annie Sloan paint here. I'm gonna use the Paris Gray, and we're just gonna paint these beads, and then we're gonna string them. So let's do that. Okay, so I have my paint open, I stirred it up. 
And we're going to open these. I, as a matter of fact, just to let you know, I got these at Myers. And they weren't much money at all. Okay, so we're just going to quickly paint these. It's going to be kind of messy, but that's okay. I really love Annie Sloan's paint. I love the way it comes out. So we're just gonna paint these all up. Almost done, we're almost there. This is messy, I'm not gonna lie, you can totally see that. I'm sure a lot of you have a better way of doing this, but for me, this is just the fastest and easiest. So, I'm just doing what I can to get these all painted. So we're gonna let these dry here and then we'll go to string them along. All right, we're gonna start putting this together. First though, we are gonna use some of this string and we have to make like tassels. So what we're gonna do, I have this piece of two by four here. I'm gonna start by wrapping that around. Just wanna keep wrapping that around so you can have a thick enough tassel is looking pretty good all right so I'm gonna slide that out so just slide that off your two by four I think that's looking good okay so I'm gonna lay that like that like so And I'm going to cut this off and then I'm going to tie a piece around here. I'm going to tie it really tight in a knot. And I'm going to loop this around a few times because I just think that it'll look a little better if we do it like that. Keep your little tail out though so that you can tie it off. All right, I think that looks good. I'm gonna cut this and we're gonna tie these two together. snip this off. So we have one tassel here. We're going to cut the loops so that it's just fringy. If you need to trim any of them up, you can do that. that's kind of cool and then once we string all our beads together we'll put a needle through here and then tie that but for right now that looks good to me we're gonna 
Make one more. All right, so now we have two tassels. We'll put them aside and let's work on our beads. You wanna cut a long enough string that all your beads can go on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a long, I have this long embroidering needle. You can get those at Joann's. I'm just going to put that through the eye of the needle. And we're going to start by alternating. We're going to do a big bead and a little bead. Looks like we have some real small ones here too. Kind of alternate them. Okay, this is pretty long. It's a pretty long rope here. So now we are going to tie this on to our thread. We're going to thread that through. We're going to make a knot in it. I'm gonna really secure it. I'm gonna go through these again just to make sure. tie this off Just shove that knot in there. I'm gonna cut this off and shove that knot right into the hole here. Trim these a little better.
Okay, so now that we have that in there, I'm just gonna trim this up to make this look like that. Just gonna cut a tiny bit off of this. Just kind of strain these out a little. So I think these came out absolutely beautiful. I definitely would display them. Yep, I love this, very nice. I'm just not sure if I should paint the tassel though. I could do that if I wanted. Maybe I'll just leave it. I kind of like it like that. Very pretty color though. Okay, you guys, I had mentioned when I did the books that I have French hang tags. Yes, we have French hang tags. There's a set of six that you get in this, and they'll be available in my Etsy store as well as my website. So basically, all you want to do is you're just going to cut, cut them out. And then you're going to take a hole puncher. I got mine at the dollar store and you just take that hole puncher and punch a hole in there. Like I said, I got this for a dollar at the, at the dollar store. And then you're going to take your jute and you're going to tie a piece of jute around there. And there you have it. You have a hang tag, which is really nice. I just think that a hang tag gives everything a finished look. As you guys know, I've been working really hard on a scroll saw class for you, and it's almost finished. I just need a couple more days to do a couple more things on it, and it should launch very soon. If you signed up for the newsletter, you're going to be the first to know when the classes launch. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter and you want to know more about what's going on with Flea Market Rescue, then you can go right on the website. There's a spot right on the homepage that says subscribe now. You can subscribe there. Or you can also go on the blog part. And if you scroll down on the right, there's also a box there that you can subscribe to the newsletter as well. Anyway, I am so excited for this class and I hope you are too. We're going to make some awesome things. So in this class, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about a scroll saw. We're going to go over all the parts of the scroll saw so that you're very familiar with them. I'm going to also teach you how to change a blade. We're going to go shopping for wood and we're going to cut the wood out. I'm going to tell you about things you might need when you have the scroll saw and we're going to do some really great projects. So I hope that you're excited about this class. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope that you'll sign up because really there's nothing to worry about with the scroll saw. It is the least one you have to worry about. And here's a clip from the class of how I got started. So how I got into scroll sawing was from my mother-in-law. She used to do a lot of craft shows and she had a scroll saw and she taught me how to do it. And I have to admit, I was afraid probably how you are right now, but guess what? It was the best thing I learned because I can make such cool stuff with a scroll saw and so will you. So we're going to make pumpkins, we're going to make cows. We're going to make breadboards. We're going to, we're going to do a few different projects. And at the end of this class, you'll know exactly how to use the scroll saw and you will be up and running. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, all right, well, how much is this class if I was going to take it? It's $34.95, but you're going to receive five free wood patterns that are valued at $30. So basically, you're taking the class for $4.95. So I think that's a pretty good bargain. So again, I'm working really hard on getting the scroll saw class together. I've been burning the midnight oil and it just needs a few more things. It should be out in just a few days. So again, if you signed up for the newsletter, you will be the first to know. Also, I don't know if you know this, but we have a Facebook group now. It's called Flea Market Rescue Projects and Ideas Group. We love for you to join. So if you want, hop on over to Facebook and sign up.
So that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes of Flea Market Rescue, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.